Every day, countless rules guide our lives. There are obvious ones like school rules, no running in the hallways, house rules, be home before curfew, governing laws like don't kill anyone. But our lives are also dictated by rules we don't always think about, like the laws of nature, like gravity and time. How about social norms, like don't be a jerk or don't point or stare. Or how about moral rules, like do what's right. Don't lie, don't cheat, uh, don't be cruel to others. In, in real life, there are consequences for breaking rules. Breaking a law might lead to punishment. Uh, trying to break a law of, of nature, like, like gravity, for example, will probably uh, lead you injured. Uh, and breaking rules that negatively impact others will often result in conflict. And that's what I want to talk to you uh, about tonight. As a middle or high school student, have you ever had a conflict with someone? I'm sure you you had. You know, maybe it was with somebody in um, you know in authority. Maybe um, it was a parent, a coach, uh, a leader. Um, have you ever had a conflict with a friend? Uh, maybe one of you was jealous. Uh, maybe someone said something hurtful. You had a misunderstanding or miscommunication. Um, have you ever been in a conflict with someone? Maybe, maybe it was this week or today, or, or are you in conflict with someone right now? Conflict is an unavoidable part of life, which is why we need to talk about it. And I want to talk about it tonight. Uh, we need to know like what to do as a student when we're angry with someone because maybe they hurt us. And, and we need to know what to do when someone else is upset with us because of how we've hurt them. If, if you've been with us for the past couple weeks, we've been talking a lot about rules and freedom and how they can co uh, coexist. And we've been talking specifically uh, about God's law. And when we talk about God's law, we're talking about like one single command. That's what we've been talking about from Jesus, to love God and others. We've been talking about how to view rules, freedom, and authority with Jesus's law of love in mind. You see, according to Jesus, as long as we're following this one rule to love God and others, we're actually following all of the rules that really matter. Now, we've been talking about this guy named James for the past few weeks. Uh, James was the brother of Jesus. He led the church in Jerusalem, and he also wrote um, the letter in scripture called James, right? That's obvious. And what was James trying to do here? He was trying to help Jesus followers learn how to love God and others. He was helping them uh, know how to love God and others. Now, because James was leading a lot of people, you can be sure conflict came up. Like that's just part of human nature. So let me read James chapter four, verse one through three really quick. And this is where we pick up in the story. It says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. And you do not have because you do not ask God. And when you do ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Now that's James chapter four, verse one through three. So let's break down James's observations here. He says, number one, people had been fighting. Now this isn't really a surprise. Like people fight all the time. Uh, dis disagreeing with someone doesn't necessarily mean that you're not being loving, but many of our conflicts happen because we haven't loved others like we love ourselves. And the second thing he says here is that um, uh, fights come out of selfishness and, and jealousy, uh, and that causes conflict. Uh, we can we can all be selfish sometimes. We uh, we want to get our way. We want to be right. Um, we want to have what someone else has. We want to be better than them. And, and those desires lead to conflict. But we can't love others and be jealous or selfish at the same time. The last thing James says is that we scheme and and uh, to get what we want. L listen, you and I have right. We've never killed anyone to to get our way but we probably have come up with a, a good scheme or two in order to get what we want. 
but we can't love others while manipulating or pressuring them to get what we want. That's like, that's not love. And, and he closes out by saying that our motives sometimes are just wrong. James reminds us that God doesn't honor selfish motives. Like if you're not getting what you want, even if you're praying about it or praying for it, maybe it's because you've been asking with selfish motives. Because we truly can't be loving while being self-serving. Now, this might sound strange uh, for some of you to hear this from a pastor or from church. Uh, But did you know that you're free to do whatever you like? You're free to do whatever you like. Are you free to be selfish? Yeah. Are you free to speak badly about others? Yes. Uh, Are you free to be judgmental towards people? Yes. Are you free to be bitter and arrogant, uh, cruel, resentful, impatient, unkind? Yes. Nothing you do will change God's love for you. But if you do those things, if you do these things, would you be loving God and others? No. So we might think that that freedom means doing whatever we want, whenever we want it. But can you imagine the consequences of that? Like if you lived your life entirely for yourself, do you think you'd be happy? Of course not. Like, do you think you'd be fulfilled? Uh, Do you think you'd have meaningful relationships with others? Like, I don't think so. Maybe the best thing that we can do tonight is, is... Uh, when we find ourselves in conflict with others, is to look to the one who gave us the law of love in the first place. And and this is what what I love about Jesus. It's not just Jesus's words that teach us, but it's how Jesus's, or how Jesus lived his life that also teaches us. So I'm gonna read you a couple passages. Uh, The first passage I'm going to read uh, are the words of Jesus. And the second passage recounts the actions of Jesus, right? It's two different things. So John chapter 15, verse 12 and 13 uh, say this. All right, John 15, verses 12 and 13. And it says this, My command is this, love each other. As I have loved you, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. So he commands us to, to love, right? And then in John, in 1 John, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us. And we also shall lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Jesus was God, which meant that he really did have the freedom to do whatever he wanted. Like this whole universe was is his, uh, along with everything in it and everyone in it. He has the power to do anything. He wants to. Uh, he has the power to do anything that he wants to at any time. But uh, check out what he did. Uh, we all know w- w- what he did. He gave up his life, right? Jesus chose to give up his freedom. Like although he was God, he chose to humble himself by inhabiting a human body here on earth. He chose to give up his own life by submitting to death and torture. And I know you know this already, but listen, I'm going somewhere. Listen, this is so important. So why did he do this? Because he loves us and he wanted us to be free. So, so check, so I'm, again, I'm going somewhere. So through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus gave us freedom that we could not have found on our own. Like freedom from sin and condemnation forever. Freedom to live a full and abundant life right now. Jesus freely gave up his freedom in order to love you and me. And then he tells us to do the same for each other. So, so here, this is what I want you to get. This is so powerful. Listen. And that's the ironic thing about freedom. Because free people give up their freedom for others. Not because they have to, but because they choose to in love. I'm going to be honest with you. 
like this is hard for me, like super t tough for me. Like I would rather just be mean back to that person. I would rather take matters into my own hands. I would rather uh, give that person I'm in conflict with a piece of my mind, uh, a piece of my mind. Like I would rather just be a jerk sometimes. But James tells us, right, or God tells us in scripture that true freedom is not found in doing whatever we want, but it's found when we choose to love God and others first. But like you're free to be in charge of your own uh, life um, and you're, you're free to live it without Jesus. But you'll find greater freedom when you, lead, when you let him lead you. Like you're free to make yourself the center of your own universe at the expense of your relationship with others. But you'll find greater freedom when you give up some of your freedoms in order to love others. When you give up some of your freedoms in order to love God and others first, but listen, you'll discover a more fulfilling kind of life. Your relationships will deepen. Uh, you'll grow. I believe that you'll grow in kindness and in patience and forgiveness and compassion and in grace. And you'll grow closer to your creator because that's what he chose to do with you. Listen, this is a sign that you are actually growing in your relationship with Jesus. Like, you want to know how you're growing? When you choose to surrender your will and your preferences and obey God rather than your emotions. Now, I'm not saying that what they did to you is okay. Like God is not saying to let people abuse you. But God is saying, hey, listen, you do the right thing. Because it's about who you're becoming. Let him take care of others. Okay, let's get ready to close and land this plane. A few minutes ago, we said that we all sometimes experience conflict with others. Right now, I want you to think of someone you currently have conflict with or who you often have conflict with. I'm thinking of some names myself. Got a name? Great. But listen, write their name down somewhere as a reminder that there's something about your relationship with them that's holding you both back from freedom. You know, maybe it's a hurt or uh, an offense that needs to be confessed or forgiven. Maybe it's your attitude or maybe it's your me-centered thinking. Even if you're sure that they're the problem in your relationship, listen, your actions either add or help solve the conflict. So before we close, let me give you two questions that I want you to wrestle with this week. Here's the first one. Have you ever been or have you been putting yourself first? Now be honest, but when it comes to the person you're in conflict with, how have you put yourself first? Have you said hurtful things because it made you feel better? Listen, I do that a lot. Have you ignored them? Uh, do you mock or talk badly about them behind your back? Do you lie about them? Um, have you been stubborn or have you been difficult or dramatic or, or, or rude? Or have you often, uh, have you often been putting, yeah, again, have you often been putting yourself first? All right, so here's, here's the second question. How can you put others first this week? How can you put others first this week? Do you need to be the first to apologize? Right? Or how about this? How about you don't respond in anger? Even when you had, even if you had a really good comeback, how about you choose to listen instead of speak? Keep in mind, putting others first doesn't mean you stop taking care of yourself. You'd be pretty unhealthy if you did that. Jesus isn't calling us to take uh, to make so many sacrifices for others that we become unhealthy ourselves. But I'm guessing that there are some sacrifices you can make for others that will help you move away from a me-centered thinking and start living with more love. And just like Jesus gave up his freedom in order to love you, there's something that you can do to sacrificially love someone else, especially someone you've been fighting with. And here's the bottom line again, because free people give up their freedom sometimes for others, not because they have to, not because the other person is right, but because you choose to do it in love and be like your savior. 
I know this is going to be challenging this week, but how can you put God first and how can you put others first this week who you've been potentially been in conflict with? Let's not pray for you and I believe in you and hope to see you real soon. Burden for too long on.
I just 